the Ric Flair tribute. Good morning. Welcome everyone to the Thursday morning edition of the Off Base Podcast. The podcast carefully crafted to remind you to suck on a fat one. If you, th- oh, the big yawn. If you think that you just happen to be the only one, because <clears throat> you're, because you're not. Look at that fucking tricep right there. Yeah. Anyway, I'm your host. I'm the Rocky Mountain No Name Jackass, and it is 67 degrees in the city of Aurora at 7:55 in the a.m. on Thursday, May 12th. 2022. Chaw time. Mahua's least favorite part of the podcast. (coughs) All right. Ceremonial first spit. shit. One of these kids coming into school, they got a, like a light blue, sky blue convertible with the top down. License plate's about to fall off, but what are you going to do? Anyway. Let's get the show on the road, Mr. Miyagi. Alright. Here we go. Let's go fuck shit up. Fuck shit up, everybody. Give that fuck face a thumbs up. Yep, fuck face. All right, let's get the glasses back on. It's a little too too bright. Thursday. My favorite day of the week. One day closer to Friday. And I said that this morning and my stepdaughter, (laughs) who was in some kind of tired mood. I understand. After I said that, she said, Every day is one day closer to Friday. And I'm like, eh, why you gotta be messing with my mojo, son? But that's all right. I know from where she is coming. So anyway, not a bad day yesterday, everybody. After I, uh, Picked up the children. Another yawn. That was a fucked up yawn. After I picked up the children, I came home and I made my cauliflower pizza crust and put a potato in the oven for my son as my stepson was having leftover rice. And then I took both boys to the gym. First time I took them both together. Because normally when I take when I go to the gym with stepson to do to go to the, the weight room, I just leave the little guy at home. Um, I have to actually be present in order for him to use the, the sim room, the simulator room that you know has the t-ball and the pitching and the blah blah blah. But I was like, wait a minute, he can still come and sh- and shoot baskets. He can go. He can go to the basketball court and shoot around and. And he actually said over the weekend, he was like, Dad, can we, can we go to the gym more and play basketball? I'm like, fuck, yeah. So I took both of them yesterday, and while stepson and I worked out, the little guy went to the gym. I taught him how to play 21, or at least my version of 21, <clears throat> where you shoot a three-pointer, a two-pointer, and a foul shot, trying to get to 21 on the dot. If you go over, you got to go back to 11. Uh, but for him, you know, of course, I moved the lineup because he's so he's a little guy. So like his his three pointer was uh, at the foul line, and then he had a two pointer, and then his his foul shot. There was another line on the court that was up. Anyway, when I taught him how to play that last week, um, while stepson and I were in the weight room <coughs> doing our workout, he played twenty one with uh, with some old guy. <laughs> in the gym, it was an old guy, I think he was like 55, but older guy, and um, he had fun, he was also just in general, just dribbling, shooting around, he was having a good time, and he was getting, at, I got him out of the fucking house, away from the screens, 
got to try to figure out how to get stepdaughter away from the screens. She, she spends way too much time in front of the screen. So I got stepson <coughs> out from uh, behind the screen, and now I'm starting to get my son out from behind the screen. So stepson and I used to go back to us there for a second. By the way, I'm fucking hungry. The workout we did yesterday <laughs> was pooped. It's more of a calorie burn, cardio calorie resistance burn than, uh, you know, just normal weightlifting. And we did a variety of combination exercises. Uh, we started off with, with burpee pull-ups, where you do a burpee and then you jump up and grab a pull-up bar and pull yourself up. And he actually, he really liked those when we started off with those. But then some of the other combo exercises that we were going through, he was getting pooped. Like, uh, when we got to the leg portion, you do 12 squats and then you do 12 box jumps immediately after you're done with your squats. And uh, holy shit, man, that thing, that one will wind you. That was a good one. And then our final exercise is what I call fit man or fitness man, where you have a set of dumbbells in your hand and you squat down, you put the dumbbells on the ground, you jump back so that you're in a plank, you do a push-up, you come back up to a squat, you come back up to standing, you curl the dumbbells, you turn them, you press the dumbbells over the head, shoulder press them over the head, curl them, and turn them back down, and that's the, the full exercise, and that's a, that one's a fucking beast, I fucking love that one, it's huge, big, huge, love it, it's a good one nice calorie burn, and then when we were done, I went and walked on the treadmill for 20 minutes at a 10% incline at 3.1 miles per hour, burned approximately, according to the machine, 200 calories there, we probably burned another 200 while we were working out, maybe two, 300, that's exactly what I want, now the tough part for me right now, and I was talking to my wife about this yesterday, is curbing hunger. Jesus Christ, man. It is, it's challenging for me to do so right now. Because I'll, I'll have my uh, eggs and avocado and keto coffee in the morning. And that's about, I think it's about 600 cows maybe. Yeah, we'll say 600 cows. And then I have my chicken cabbage soup for lunch, which is another 600. And then I try to hold off until we get to, to dinner to keep my cows low keep them around 15 to 1800 but it's like Jesus Christ man I can't it's it's very challenging <laughs> and I get to like mid-afternoon I'm like fuck I'm hungry and <clears throat> I end up going in and uh getting like a, a tablespoon of peanut butter it's fucking it's fucking hot it's not easy kid to want to eat so anyway, I'm at 188 pounds, and we'll see. The goal is to get down to about 170 by July, by our uh, first anniversary. We have two anniversaries, me and my wife. We have 727, and we have 828, July 27th and August 28th. 727, because when I did propose to my lady in June of 2010, I think it was June, Yeah, yeah, it was June of 2010, because uh, we had we had been living together for the past six, seven months, and I had proposed in June after she had graduated from her fellowship, and then shortly after that, she had gotten orders to go to Alaska, so I was like, great, let's see what we can do here, let's go to Alaska, however, uh, the military doesn't ship boyfriends around, <laughs> So we had to get ourselves married with bridesmaids and flowers. What movie? Oh, my cousin Vinny, Mona Lisa Vito. That's right. So we got married on July 27th. Just both of us took off work, went down to the courthouse, said our vows, which included obey. She has to obey me. Just kidding. And then we went to La Guadalajara, Mexican restaurant for lunch and went back to work. And then all of a sudden we were married. But we did have uh, 
you know, the, the whole big pump and circumstance planned for August 28th for all of our, our family to come down. I mean, that was a blast. That was such a great fucking party, man. So 727, 828. And by the time we get to 727, I want to be 170 pounds. Maybe 172, just to play with the numbers a little bit. 727, 72. Right? Right? So that's the goal. So we'll see. We'll see how I do. We'll see how well I can curb those hunger pains because they're tough. And then I also have to watch um, how I'm drinking over the weekend, there, kid. You know. So, other than that, what else is going on? Well, today, uh, tonight. My wife and I are going to the chief induction ceremony, which is a phenomenal accomplishment for any enlisted member in the military who makes it to the rank of chief. I mean, there's such a small percentage that do. And <clears throat> I've met her her chiefs in the past, and they've been some cool motherfucking fuckers. My man, Carlos Madison, uh, wish I got to see him a little bit more. That dude was awesome. Stylish as all hell. Dude knew how to dress. And I'm trying to remember some of her other chiefs that, that she had. Carlos sticks out. Um, anyway, then to actually go from chief to master chief, that's a fucking, that's a big deal right there. So anyway, we've got the chief induction ceremony tonight. Tomorrow night, <clears throat> I think we got nothing. Yeah, I'm doing the cachao de pepe for dinner with shrimp and filet mignon. Because during the week, you know, we we uh, we do well during the week. We keep it simple. We don't go too extravagant. Like on Sunday, I'd made uh, chile rellenos, stuffed them with a chipotle pork that I make, and the pork butt that I got, I got a five pound pork butt, pork butt for like six bucks. It's fucking awesome. And that thing is now lasting us. I still have some left over. Uh, I used some last night to put on the the cauliflower pizza that I made. But I still got maybe a pound and a half, two pounds left over. Fucking great. So we we do a nice job on the budget. Like, I'll I'll say Sunday through Thursday. And then Friday and Saturday, we enjoy ourselves, you know? I mean, when you look at, at my uh, diet during the week, I've already, I've already said so many times, I had four eggs, a half of an avocado, and keto coffee for breakfast. Um, <clears throat> and that's pretty economical. And then my chicken and cabbage soup, the only like real big cost right there is the chicken breast. But eight-ounce chicken breast gets the job done. And if I end up buying five pounds of chicken breast, so that's 10, 10 meals right there. Five pounds of chicken breast for about 10 bucks. It's not too shabby. And then I think I'm, I'm going to, eh, let's see what I start end up doing with dinner here. I think I might just end up, you know, having a can of tuna in oil because that'll put me at 1800. I think, I think that's what I might do. I might start doing that. I might jump to that fuck shit up that way. Anyway, <clears throat> my wife and I had a really nice night last night when we got back from the gym, when I got back from the gym with the boys. Because I just finished putting the dinner together and then we, we actually ate outside. It was very nice last night. It was in the lower to mid 70s, even after the sun went down, which tells you, hey, it's getting nice out, fuckers. So enjoy yourselves. You know what I mean? And one of these Fridays coming up, maybe even next, maybe even tomorrow, I might yank out the old uh, fire pit, put it in the middle of the cul-de-sac. Be like, all right, everybody, come on out. <clears throat> maybe go get some beers. Ah, maybe I won't do it this Friday. The stepson and I, we've got a, because my wife and I are going to the chief induction ceremony tonight, stepson and I have to do our Murph tomorrow. So once we get home, you know, we get home at about five, 
when I get the kids a chance to just decompress. Stepson and I will probably start to Murph probably quarter to six so that we're done by seven. And then we'll eat dinner. So, yeah, I, I can't bring this stuff out. Now, normally, uh, you know, if we didn't have something to go to on Thursday night, we would do the move from Murph on Thursday. And then Friday would be a nice chill day, chill night. So the next time that uh, I got that going on, then I'll pull the fire pit out to the cul-de-sac and it'll be fucking sweet, dog. All right, we're more than halfway there. Let's switch topics. Let's go back to economics in the markets because um, things are happening in those financial markets right now, man. Federal Reserve came out, said, hey, we're not we're not doing a 75 basis point hike. That's off the table. And initially the markets went nuts. And then the next day, they got fucking slammed. Why? Because people came to their senses and they were like, well, the Fed is behind the curve, dog. They need to do 75 basis points, <clears throat> if not more, to try to combat inflation, which, of course, they created. That's just so fucking funny. They create the mess and then they got to clean it up, but they never clean it up right. They always end up crashing the economy, which is what they're starting to do right now. I mean, the selling has been quite relentless. When I checked my phone before I started the podcast, markets were down, S&P was down another 50 handles. So they're below 3,900 right now. And I told, I've been saying that if it gets down to the mid uh, 3,000s, 3,600, 3,500, I'm going to start, I'm going to start to nibble for a trade just for a trade because uh, we're in a bear market everybody <laughs> it's coming home to roosts <clears throat> so the, it seems as though the crash isn't happening um, in one day as like a lot of people expect where, where the markets just break and you get a 1987 style crash again. It's happening over a period of weeks here. You take a look at a, a chart of, of any of the major indices or indexes, whatever the whatever fucking plural you want to use, and um, it's been like straight down since April. It's been rough for those who are still participating. But you know, <clears throat> people always you know think about selling as a negative. Uh, which it's not. Think about if you think about it from the perspective of, of um, somebody who has had a wonderful gain and has had the discipline to take the money off the table. Like selling is great. So now you can buy back at lower prices. So I hate how CNBC does that. You're like, oh, it's, it's selling. The markets are in turmoil. Oh no, really? That's bad. That's bad that we're selling off and getting. Uh, discounted prices for investments <clears throat> the other thing that they do all the time is demonize short selling and I, I am a firm believer that short selling the short sellers are, fuck the SEC um, because they still haven't prosecuted Elon Musk for all the bullshit he's done and he's not the only one who's been using social media to pump certain stocks, including his own like a like Tesla when he came out and said, eh, I'm going to take him private at $420 a share. That was fucking ridiculous. That was deliberate stock manip manipulation. So uh, fuck the SEC. Short sellers are the police chiefs of the market because they do phenomenal research. They find companies who are either fraudulent or should not be in business anymore, who are wasting shareholder capital, and they short the stock. Seems like a good idea to me. I got no problem with short sellers, man. None. They were doing it to the banks in 2008. Banks deserved it. Those banks didn't deserve to be in business. None of them. Gambling with their shareholders' money. And it was gambling. <clears throat> it wasn't investing. They were betting on things that did not have a return associated with them. I guess you could you could argue, oh, mortgage-backed security, you're getting a coupon. But it's like, fuck, come on, man. A coupon on mortgages that are like triple F minus? <laughs> There's no way those people were paying those mortgages back. No income verification. 
Oh, there's Moto. I gotta go over to Moto. So uh, we'll see what's gonna happen here. There's there's a bottom that's coming, a relative bottom. I don't think it's the absolute bottom, but there is a relative bottom on its way. Look at Moto up here. He's the fucking man. <laughs> Texas, Texas and look at that. That's a big glow. Oh, I thought I, had, I thought I had my Alabama hat on. <laughs> thought I had Alabama. Oh, no. That was funny. All right, Moto. You made me laugh. <laughs> Moto's all right. Yeah. So anyway, the relative bottom is is coming. But not the absolute bottom. Uh, it's it's quite possible that we'll s before this is all said and done, we'll, we'll see. I think a little bit below two thousand on the S and P because that'll be a fifty percent correction, uh, more than a fifty percent correction from the from the peak, which was forty eight hundred. That's my call. Whether or not it comes true, who the fuck knows. But if uh, if the bond market continues to call the Federal Reserve's bluff, look out. Um, what we're seeing right now, if you look at a long-term trend line, like a long-term trend line of the 10-year U.S. Treasury, it is right at the trend line. There's a downsloping trend line. And every time it has hit that downsloping trend line before, bonds have been going back to zero or just back down in yield, not in price. However, after 40 years of the bond bull market, it is quite possible because of uh, our inflation situation that you see the 10-year finally go above and stay above 3%. If it does, look the fuck out. All I'm saying, the jackass economist here, the Rocky Mountain no name jackass economist. And then, if you if we start to see 10 year treasuries up around 10%, which will probably take you know, maybe a couple years, um, that's going to be a phenomenal buying opportunity, man. If you've got a, a million dollars and you put a million dollars into 10-year U.S. Treasuries yielding 10%, you're going to make $100,000 every year for 10 years. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> That's a great return. So, with that being said, uh, look for opportunity in these markets, people. It's going to be there. It's going to be there hot. It's going to be there strong. And I'm going to wish everybody a great Thursday, and I will smell you tomorrow.